So, Nick, I want to thank you for taking time out to do the Art of Fearlessly Doing Business interview. Mm -hmm. um, tell everybody who you are and what your business is. Well, my name is Nick Stella Fox. I'm the co-owner of Carefree Outdoor Living. Uh, we focus on high-end outdoor patio furniture, outdoor kitchen appliances, cushion replacements, umbrellas, um, anything that has to do with the outdoor room, uh, we focus on that. And you have like a really big barbecue selection. Yes. All of our barbecues are made in the United States, and that's very important to me that I only carry uh, barbecues that are manufactured right here in the U.S. That's really interesting to mm -hmm. me. Good for you. Mm -hmm. did, did you know that Sung Cha, who was earlier on in this, in this uh, video uh, series, is a, the owner of Bell Union Auto? Yeah. That um, Sinclair Oil is also only um, North American made oil? Really? Yeah. I so didn't actually, that. Sinclair is an American company, and all of the oil that makes the gas that is uh, in uh, Sinclair gas is from um, either America, Canada, or Mexico. Oh, that's good. That's, I think it's very important and it uh, helps support U.S. jobs. So. Well, that's really awesome. Mm -hmm. So uh, you were kind of like moving in one direction and got kind of scooped up by your, co by your partners here. What, yeah. what, what made, gave you the, the wild idea to say, yes, I want to go in business and let's get this thing rolling? Uh, you know, why just, why'd you do that? Well, you know, I was uh, working in outside sales for Pella Windows and Doors and uh, Jim and Valerie Sheehan were custom home builders up here in Cave Creek, and he was one of my customers. I sold window and door packages to him for the new homes that he was building. Um, around uh, 2012, the economy was still kind of dragging, and Pella was making a lot of changes. And I was working with Jimmy on a project, and he, he kind of came to me and he said, hey, listen, uh, if you would like, I've got this patio furniture store that I'm trying to get going. And if you would like the opportunity, you can come in and be 50% partner um, with Valerie and I. And around that same time, uh, Pella had did a huge reduction in force, and I got caught in that. So really, like, the coincidence and the timing couldn't have been better. But it was literally like, one day, I'm a Pella Windows and Doors corporate sales rep, and the next day, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I decided to become an entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> and you and I are kind of having a similar experience, uh, because when I asked to be part of the show, I didn't yet know that I was opening up Fearless Artworks down the street, and then I was mo moving this opening to a gallery that I'm opening literally down the street from you. So mm -hmm. it's, it's funny. Sometimes we can be entrepreneurs, and we think that we're stuck, or we can be in a job, and we think that we're stuck, but really, literally, any day, your whole life can change, and some wonderful opportunity can come across your path, and you can just scoop it up. Yeah, and I think what's funny to me is I never really thought that I would be in a business like this. Like, there's no way that I ever would have, you know, like, I don't have that story of like, man, I was 12 years old and I saw my first accent pillow. I knew that I wanted to correlate those with other fabrics for cushions. Like, I, you know, never had that moment. Um, but I did always kind of know that I wanted to be an entrepreneur and I've got a very high risk tolerance. So that was okay for me to deal with. Um, and a very good sense of humor, too, which I think is also <laughs> a very you. important characteristic for entrepreneurs to have, right? you got to be able to laugh at yeah, yourself. Yeah, I, I definitely life. laugh at myself a lot. So. so what was the first big fear you had to overcome to say, okay, I'm going to go from being a sales guy where I have, you know, maybe I'm working commission, but I have some level of security with that company. Yeah. Um, you know, whether you're, you know, in a reduction of force or not, you're still making a decision. I'm not going to go look for another job. Yeah. Uh, what first fear did you have to kind of negotiate in your mind to just kind of move forward? That's exactly what it was. It's literally, I went from always having a safety net underneath me, no matter, even if I was a commission sales rep, there was always a guarantee or like, you know, that you always have income coming in every single month. And then all of a sudden I decided to just go to the jumping off point. Like it was, I was, I moved all in. I just, I had to come to terms that you are going to have to make your own money and there's nobody else that's going to help support you from this point on. And the only way to do that is to work very hard and build the business up as quickly and as effectively as possible. And um, that's essentially what we did. Because so. you guys can't, you know, started, it was a brand new business. It wasn't like you came and took over a business that was already that's completely correct. functioning. It was a new branch to what that's somebody right. was already there doing. There was but... some very, very, you know, small preliminary, um, actions that took place to kind of get some of the the lines of furniture that we're selling in place and the, and the grills in place so I had a little bit of inventory to work with and some and some uh, partnerships to, to start with uh, but it was an extremely uh, limited selection so we literally uh, went and found a, like a 900 square foot showroom to start in <laughs> and packed it with as much stuff as we could and uh, we were there for about nine months, and we just wanted to try to see if we could get some traction 
get anything going. I think in my mind, I, I liken it to like in the old days when the miners would go out <laughs> in the mining fields and do like their little test gold mines to see if they could hit any gold. And so we were literally like just test mining for gold for like well, it's smart. months and then, you know, decided that it was something that we could really work work with. So what was the first big bump that you hit? You know, you, now you got the thing open, yeah. maybe you moved to a new, what, what was the first big, oh my God, what was I thinking? I mean, was I really thinking that being Biggest an bump, yeah, absolutely. Biggest bump was <laughs> You about, know exactly what it is. Absolutely. About <laughs> six, seven, eight, eight months in. Like we literally, we're in a very small location. We're trying to get things figured out. And then all of a sudden we get like two big orders come in. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't have anywhere to put this. I don't have the logistics to deal with this. So I had to make the decision uh, with my business partners as well. Like, we, we made the decision, like, we need to find a new location, and we had to find the lo location quickly, and that's when we moved to this location here um, in Carefree, and uh, I've been extremely happy with that decision, but literally it was like, uh, it was the first time in my life that I've ever put my name on a dotted line, you know, for a guarantee on a lease, and it's just very scary uh, to go through those things initially when you have never had experience doing that before. Right. But uh, I just had this blind faith that I could make it work, and, and I just kept on working through it, and uh, and it worked out okay. So. Wow. You know, it's Josh Farley, the, the, the gentleman who opened this entire series. Uh, he owns Redline Solar, um, electric and solar. Mm -hmm. And his, his first big bump was exactly the same thing. He got an order, and... Um, for and twenty nine pallets were dropped off in his driveway. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> you know, like a mountain of pallets. That's what his painting is about. And he had to that. he had to go find the location that they're in now. And mm -hmm. and now they're at the point where they're going to grow again and move. But he had exactly the same problem. Mm -hmm. That's a really good problem to have. Hey, GM, I'm it I'm is. doing yeah. so well that I need to like you know up my game. Yeah. But it's scary because you do have to put your name on a lease, and it, that's and you don't know what's going to happen. So it's scary. Yeah. Luckily, I've got really experienced uh, business partners that you know they've been in there. They've been been in business for like the last 30 years so they are very experienced at being entrepreneurs so to them it was like no big know, deal no, big no deal. brainer to me i'm like oh my god what's going on so um <laughs> they're very good you know uh I, I consider them like family to me so it's it's nice to work with them that's way cool mm -hmm. and so what's the thing that kind of I, i've learned to not say fear anymore because i think once you've been in the game for a little while the fear becomes an opportunity or a challenge or you know, just something to work on. But what's the thing that concerns you the most right now and how are you dealing with it? Yeah, I think, I think I'm always going to have anxiety about being a business owner. Um, I don't care how good my sales are one year or how good of a month that I'm having. I think every day I wake up and I think, what am I going to do if nobody comes into my store ever again? <laughs> yeah. Like what happens if everything that I work for fails or, or goes away? And I think the only way that you can try to overcome that and – and keep yourself from worrying about that as to diversify, you know, your income streams or diversify the way that your business is, is generating income as much as possible. So let's say that I have a really strong month selling furniture. I might not have a strong month selling grills, but the next month the grills are outperforming furniture and like, and vice versa, cushion replacements. So I try to get everything in the store working together um, to help decrease the risk of, of failure. Right, isn't that not just relying on one person, one thing, one idea? Right. But right. that's 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 really smart. Um, I was looking at Richard Branson's Virgin Group mm -hmm. uh, last week, and have you ever had a chance? Like Google Google how many different companies that guy I consider myself like the Cave Creek Carefree He's, Richard Branson. Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's and I you know I think that way about you. you yes, know, that's like the uh, Carefree do. Outdoor yeah. Living Group here. When I think. Richard Branson and Virgin, Virgin, I think, Carefree Outdoor Living. Yeah. <laughs> so what can you tell people about, you know, what you've learned about fearlessness? Because you've, you know, you really have walked through a lot of fear to be mm -hmm. sitting here having this conversation with me. Yeah. I'd say the biggest thing that I've learned is to, which is going to sound crazy, but embrace mistakes. Yeah. Like when things like blow up in your face, instead of, I, I used to just be, first of all, I'd ha have anxiety about making a mistake. I didn't ever want to make a mistake. Mm. And then when I did make a mistake, it was a huge deal. And I would try to either run away from it or... Um, Define it, figure it out, categorize it. Yeah, exactly. It. Yeah. Overanalyze Blame, it. Blame, overanalyze, yeah. blah, blah, and, blah. You know, now, I, you know, after working in the business for, you know, several years, it's, it's much easier. Like, I've learned to lean into to the mistake. Like, lean into the turn. Lean into the, the problem and get it taken care of right away and get, it, and get on top of it. And I think uh, the more that I make a mistake the more that it's a learning experience for me, and I realize that now, versus, you know, something that's a risk to the business. So, was there, like, one particular 
thing that you just kind of had that epiphany or you just kind no. of all of a sudden you woke up and no. went, wow, I'm dealing with this differently. It's mostly like, I, I think over time um, and just because I deal with the general public and I have great customers, but uh, I, I think I just learned a better way to deal with, with situations um, so that they're happier. And, uh, you know, I think everybody understands that mistakes happen. Like, I can't control if a truck breaks down in New Mexico and somebody doesn't get their furniture when it was supposed to be here before, like, Easter dinner. You know what I mean? <laughs> so when that happens, I just try to stay on top of it as soon, like, as quickly as I can get on top of it and tell everybody, you know, exactly what's going on instead of, you know, I don't, I don't know, like, letting somebody figure it out for themselves. Which yeah, is you found that the transparency it, yeah. is... Just complete Being straightforward, transparency, transparency yeah. is always the best policy, right? Absolutely. You know, I think that uh, over the past 38 interviews I've done, the, one of the big synergies through all of your conversations is that is experience and time breeds fearlessness. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, yeah. once you make enough mistakes and you realize that the, the sky's not going to fall, like the sun's going to come up tomorrow, exactly. you know, all those, those, those little yeah. analogies that we use, yeah. you realize, well, okay, so I'm in the middle of a, of a poop storm right now, but, mm -hmm. you know, tomorrow the sun's going to come up and I'm going to come in, someone's going to come in for a barbecue and I'm going to get out with my day and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll figure it out. But when you're first going through the first couple of bumps, it's 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 horrific, right? Yes. And then over time, it's it's not that it's not still a challenge, but it's it's you just learn how to deal with it a little you bit just, better. You look by at time. it uh, through a different view. Yeah. And once you're able to look at it through a, a positive view, then everything gets a lot easier. So you're um, the president of the board of the Carefree Cave Creek Chamber. I am chairman of the board. Chairman of the board. Yeah. So I always forget which the title is. I left so my top hat and my monocle at home today. But <laughs> I, just, I just wear that. So. so tell us a little bit about the chamber and when your next mixer is so that people can come visit. Yeah. So our mixers are always the second Wednesday of the month. And our chamber breakfast is always at Harold's um, the last Thursday of every month. So I would encourage anybody that... that does even you don't have to live or work in Carefree or Cave Creek to be a member of the chamber. If you do business within like our communities up here, I would encourage you to reach out to the chamber and uh, explore the opportunity to be a part of it, because I, I think that the community is great and everybody that I work with up here is fantastic, and we have a really close knit business community and we help each other out quite a bit. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, Nick, I really appreciate your time. I'm so excited that we're neighbors. I mean, I'm very excited. That we <laughs> we're going to have a ton of fun you. together. I look forward to seeing you on May 5th at the new Fearless Artworks in yes. Carefree, which is on uh, at 7211 East Ho Road. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's really funny because my house is on East Tally Ho Road. Oh. And my business is on Ho Road, so I seem to have a little a little uh, synergy going on with the you word do. ho. <laughs> you do, yes. So I'm, I'm choosing to look at like ho like, you know, when you're gardening. Exactly. Because it, it's I actually think, spelled like H-O. Ho. Yeah, I think hard work in the garden. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Nick. We'll see, we'll see you next month. Thank you.